the street and social justice. This increase, um, you know, we can have as 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 I think this this um, exhibition stretches in many ways when we think about the land and the environment, the stories behind um, some of these images, as well as framing this. We're also looking at migration and the mundane act activities of everyday life. Um, Bernice Abbott, 1935, and newsstand. We look at this newsstand, we see a lively community. We know it's in Midtown uh, Manhattan. Uh, we know it's a business area, but we also see workers, uh, men and women moving through the community. But there are a lot of women on the cover of these magazines. So we see this uh, place where women are objectified, explored, and, and identified as beauty and as subject but also challenged and, and enduring this moment of how they are read. On top of, you can have a Sunday, you can have a malted milk. And so the exchange of conversations, you can have sodas, but here we see the world through the magazine world. We see the news of the world. We also see um, light fiction and theater stories in um, the framing of this image. And, Winston Link's um, steam locomotive, 1950s, an, an image that um, became really popular to study in the 90s in an important way of looking at this as a storytelling moment of migration, but also of transportation. Uh, we see the industrial age as we see um, the workers. We see the importance of this image as a way of transforming the moment of a still image such as this image in 1938 by Walter Rosenblum, gypsy children playing cards on Pitt Street in New York. Again, the stoop, the front stairs, the, the sense of play, the sense of community, uh, and then we the recreation, but the cards and the joy and the way that Rosenblum photographs the lighting, he's captured the joy on the child's face and then the experience in the 1940s with Ansel Adams. And this is Clearing Storm, um, store, Clearing Storm at the Mount, Mount Williamson, Sierra Nevada. And this is about Manzanar, California. This is where uh, men and women, American born Japanese and, and first generation Japanese um, families were moved to, imprisoned into concentration camps uh, in this area. This powerful image, you know, when, when I studied this image, no one talked about the experience of, of the people who moved there from California who had to leave their homes. They talked about the lighting, the rocks, the, you know, this whole experience of the, of the sky. Um, and this is, you know, in terms of injustices, in terms of learning photography, teaching photography and trying to understand this moment that, um, Ansel Adams understood the importance of what this image meant to the people who were dispossessed, who lost their, their homes. And he donated the collection to the Library of Congress in 1965, explaining the purpose of my work was to show how these people suffering under a great injustice and loss of property, businesses and professions had overcome the sense of defeat and despair by building for themselves a vital community here we see in this image. And so this is, he, pre he presented this collection of images to the Library of Congress so that it's not lost. So that narrative is there. Uh, the Kalamazoo River. I, I really thought it was important also to, to think about place and to look at place through the image of Mary Whelan. This is 2013 and, and, and eight by 10, 10 type. So we see in a contemporary experience of how do we look at the 19th century to bring the, the life of a, of a river that's been around for years. But here we begin to see a, a contemporary photographer and artist who's involved with looking at beauty and preserving that beauty. The beauty of Walker Evans in, in similar ways. It's how he's looking at Bourbon Street in New Orleans, entering into a space of perfection as this, barbershop, we see the stripes, we see, as I mentioned, the, 
the experience of Bourbon Street we know today as joy, joyful, playful um, artistry. And we see the, the ex exchange in that way. Marion Post Walcott, um, 1941 in Picnic in Sarasota, Florida. Just these range again, uh, Marion Post Walcott, Jitterbugging and the Juke Joint in Clarksdale, Mississippi. And these images are next to each other in that section. Part of that section also is Charles Moore's photograph of Martin Luther King, his arrest in Montgomery, Alabama in 1958. Again, as I wanted to tell the story through that lens of injustice, but also beauty and hope is the way that Dr. King is not resisting arrest, but he is pushed and thrust against the, the banner, the table there, um, but, but his hat is not jostled. We see this moment as a moment that transforms um, his understanding of self and citizenship. Gordon Parks, photograph of Malcolm X in Harlem, outside of the Liberation Bookstore. Um, and we see this uh, Arthur Michaud's, Oscar, Arthur, I mean, um, the Michaud Bookstore in Harlem, 125th Street. I'm thinking of Oscar Michaud, who was the filmmaker, but they have the same last name and it's just, you know, very unusual. Um, so he um, photographs and, and understands the history of Back to Africa movement. He's talking about the present day, 1963. We know two years later, um, unfortunately, he is killed in Harlem. And looking at the crowd, we see Dick Gregory in the crowd to his left. We see um, dignitaries in Harlem, writers, activists, but the background of this sense of the history of people who have been denied their history. But this bookstore was central to telling the story of black people worldwide through centuries. We, they have a, a painting of uh, Ethiopia, Liberian leaders, Egypt, Sudan, connecting the global aspect of Africa, Ghana, you know, Cameroon, Togo, and the Congo. So these were heroes um, through this experience of independence movement in the 1960s and in late 50s and activists, activists began to study the independence movement in, in colonial and post-colonial Africa. And in terms of our aspect, we're at the same time experiencing um, segregation in the South. There's a young woman um, receiving her voter registration card. The pride that she presented through the photographs of Ernest Withers we see um, she's holding her card. She's making a decision about her future. We can connect it to the day in the way that the experience of voting um, happened over the past year and how young people had difficulties of voting, black people, a people of color and, and older people. So we began to see the importance of voting and the experience through the lens of Ernest Withers. His image here, I am a man, in 1968. This also is a collection of people who were denied their humanness, that being human, um, because two men um, died in a sanitation truck um, a few days before. Dr. King was in Memphis at the time to talk about this march and to talk about the injustices of these men and how they died. And this is the march where men were walking around saying, I am a man. And you know, this is a powerful statement for grown men to, to remind the government, to remind the city that they are human. And they're, the woman on the left, she is one of the organizers of this. And it's really fascinating. I, I gave a talk in England one year and I met a student through that talk and she's writing her dissertation on this image, but focusing on the, women on, the woman on the edge of the photograph. So we, there's so many stories that we can find as we look through um, these images. Danny Lyons um, photographing in Texas, the prisoners. To Sharon Nashat, uh, Rapture series, uh, Women in Line. Patrick Nagatani, you know, just in terms of iconic places, the Rocket Lounge, the color, 
the experience of 1980s, the excitement of the, the camper, the children looking at these moments of, of photography, photographic moments. And Dawu Bay also looking at history, looking at the experience of the Underground Rail Railroad, how to relive it through a contemporary lens. He's photographing houses that he researched and, and cities that he researched that housed and protected Black people who were enslaved, who were leaving the South um, for freedom. And this is one house here. There's an exhibition in the exhibition. There are um, a group of six images in the collection. And you'll see, and it's at night. So he's creating these images at low light. And we begin to imagine people who, to allow us to imagine people who live uh, through this trauma and, and making it to, to the North. Art is a subject. So these are images of photographers and artists, writers who were documented by an array of, of photographers. Um, Karsh photographing Georgia O'Keeffe, um, the profile, and we see above her head, we see the moment that, that he captures in here. Walter Gottlieb's photograph of Duke Ellington, uh, a wonderful image of the interior of a dressing room. Ellington, always known for his well-dressed, well-coiffed look, but also there's a photograph of, of Ellington pinned into the mirror. So there's a reflection of saying, yes, check me, and I'm checked. So there's that, that moment. But also look at the ties, the joy that this uh, composer and musician who understood what it meant to be the ambassador of music uh, for this country. Diego Rivera's photograph of Frida Kahlo and Emmy Lou Packard um, in, in their, their love of relationships and friendship. He's captured that moment. Irving Penn, Truman Capote in 1948. Again, an image in the corner, you know, how he's created this cornered image of a writer um, and how he's able to just imagine that story. 